speed and conditioning what's the difference in each how does each affect you what should you be doing as an athlete and what does all this jargon stand for that we talk about in the world of sports performance whether that be volume intensity uh intent things of that nature what does all that mean let's try to paint a clearer picture for you if you like the content like subscribe and as always be legendary My name is Justin Miller. I'm the owner of Legends of Athletics. I've been in the sports performance industry for the last 10 years, working with countless athletes from Division I level on down to the Pee Wee level. We've had a multitude of athletes over that time span. And so I feel that I know that I know a little bit about the about the subject at hand that I'm uh, talking to you guys about. And so when it comes to speed and conditioning, these things can get kind of lost in the sauce and it's easy to kind of get confused by them because especially if you're not in the world of strength and conditioning or sports performance and you don't do this every day they can appear to be the same thing but they do have differences before we get too far into the episode because i literally forgot and i just thought about this don't forget to go to social media like our pages legends of athletics the follow is free the share is free and that's all we ask to for you to support what we're doing so Whenever we're getting into it, like I said, it can look the same, but there are, 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 are really stark differences. So a lot of times whenever we're conditioning athletes, what we're going to do is we're going to have incomplete rest. We're more than likely, more times than not, most coaches, whether knowingly or unknowingly, are training the alactic system. And then we're going to do a lot of things in short burst uh, and, like I said, incomplete rest. And those are what we're kind of doing in, in just normal everyday conditioning. I'm not going to get into a lot of the energy systems. I'm not going to get into a lot of that stuff. But when we're conditioning, those are the things that we're doing nine times out of ten. Again, whether we consciously know what we're doing or we unconsciously don't know what we're doing because we're following something that we've been doing for forever. That's the basis of conditioning. So. With that, when you get incomplete rest, then we're not able to give the same intensity as we would if we had a complete rest. We're not a, we're able to do more volume, but the volume becomes more qu uh, quantity versus quality volume. So this is where you see a lot of skill breakdown. You see a lot of uh, athletes just kind of try to get through it because your mentality has to be to get through it versus let me excel through it or let me. Uh, do my best through it and so that's what you kind of get there and then on top of that it's more of a thing that you will see nine times out of ten when in a conditioning in a conditioning session you will see this last anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour depending on sport depending on school a multitude of a multitude of factors that we can go over but this just depends on all that stuff and so that's the basis of what you get with conditioning conditioning is something that you see in every school regardless if they are a great program or not so great program this is what you're going to see like i said just that's normal conditioning we all do conditioning from the time we play peewee sports all the way up to the professional level everybody does conditioning and so that's what it is now when it comes to speed training the biggest difference in speed training are going to be your rest times your intensity and the volume those are things I just talked about with the conditioning, but with the speed training, these two things, speed and conditioning are cut from the same cloth, but serve two different purposes and we're going for two different outcomes. With speed training, our rest time. So when we're conditioning, we don't want a complete rest time. So we'll go for something where the athlete is resting for, let's say they run 10 yards, right? Prescribed load for most most coaches, if you read any book, it's going to say, take a minute for every 10 yards or every 10 meters, depending on what um, system that you're following. So I'm I'm in the U.S. I'm an American. So I follow. I can't remember, but I do everything in yards. Of course, I know if you're like in Canada or something like that, then y'all, you guys go more so for uh for meters and things like that. So meters and centimeters and we go more yards and inches so that's that's just the the metric that we follow so anyway if you go for 10 yards then the normal resting protocol is for a one minute rest for every 10 yards so incomplete and if i wanted to make this conditioning i would say well we're going to only rest for 20 seconds or 30 seconds or 40 seconds in speed training i'm going to take that full minute rest just because I want the energy systems to completely restore themselves and then 
go from there so that we can get complete intensity and a complete outcome that we're aiming to get. The next thing, so that's my rest time. The next thing is the intensity. So with intensity, I want athletes to be able to go at 90 to 100% of their maximum velocity whenever they're training and, and we're working on speed because you can only... To run fast, you have to train fast. So if we're only training slow or the energy systems are so low that I cannot get the same stimulus, i.e. the 90 plus percent maximum velocity in sprinting, then I cannot train this athlete. That is not speed training. I am now just conditioning because conditioning happens at sub maximum loads. So sub max load being we're at 70 percent and below whenever we're running each lap or we're running each sprint or we're running each whatever interval or whatever names that you want to call it. So you're going to be at 70% or lower in that regard versus in speed training. We're going to be at 90 plus percent at our max velocity. The next thing is volume. So volume is just talking about how much of this we're going to do, right? So when you see conditioning, let's go back to my era. I'm 34 years old. So I play in the era of football that was a little psycho. Uh, it was a little bit different than it is today. And we're going to use football fish regard. Back in my day, <laughs> when you had, when you went to college to play football, it was normal for, for teams to run 12, 14, 16 plus 110s in a session. So you have to think about it. If your team ran 16 110 yard sprints that is 16 well it's more than that but simple math that is what 1600 plus yards in a single session listen again use your common sense don't Forget the blogs. Forget how you feel about me. Hate me if you want to. Love me if you want. But just use your common sense. That is 16 plus 100 yards in one session. Speed training, we're going for 300. Top side of that, 600 yards in a session. It's completely and totally different. It, that's not, that's like a 10, well, no, it's not. It may be, all right, now I'm doing math. That may be a 10th of what you do uh, in, a, in, a, in a session. And somebody's going to correct me on that math in the comment section, and I appreciate it. And FYI, I was pretty, I'm pretty good at math, but for whatever reason, I cannot figure that out right now. So that is the biggest difference. Rest times, intensity, and volume. Our volume, we want to keep it, manageable because it's only so many times that somebody can sprint at 90 plus percent anyway uh if i was doing 100 yards like if i was saying hey we're gonna do top end speed i personally wouldn't go over 60 yards personally um and then personally again and i'm putting i'm putting everything in these air quality personally i wouldn't go over three reps to equal one set meaning 360s is going to equal one set and we may do two to three sets depending on the day of that and it also depends on the the sport that you're training a lot of times with a lot of stuff we we look at track and field as a uh, a great marker a great a tool to use as far as like you know training speed uh rest times intensity rest days filling in the rest days uh like recovery days things like that that's great but at the same time if we have a field sport athlete like a football player basketball player soccer player and they have to repeat this every day repeat bouts every day well we have to be a little smarter on what we want to do right so you know it's impossible to sprint at 90 plus percent maximum velocity for two days straight it's just i don't care it's impossible somebody can tell me if i'm wrong but that's impossible but we but we can go and condition ourselves to where we can go 80 we can go between 80, 90, 80, 90, somewhere in there and flip back and forth. It's just a matter of training and training stimulus and training outcome and training goals. So, you know, I wanted to make this video to tell you the biggest differences in those. And I think that was kind of like, I guess you, I, I'm not going to even count that as a bonus, like the field stuff. But 
the bonus thing would be is that speed training is is very skill oriented in order to run fast you have to perfect the skill the thing that i, I like to tell my athletes a lot of times is when we're doing speed drills not like free sprints but when we're doing speed drills such as like running over the wickets uh doing curve runs change direction and things like that de deceleration all that stuff this is the way this way i look at it right if you cannot do that at a low speed at a low intensity then you cannot accomplish the same results with a high speed and a high intensity speed is rhythmic as well as well as silic so you have to know how to cycle uh pretty good but you also have to know how to stay in rhythm pretty good as well and so we want to condition those things like how i had that play on words we want to condition those things and not just get lost in the sauce of conditioning every day because when you condition every day routinely every day uh, at some point you're gonna just lose speed because you don't have the ability to train speed and so that's where speed training comes into play that's where hiring a good private coach comes into play and it's not it's not as easy to train as maybe i'm making it sound or maybe others make it sound speed training is very tedious and detailed um it just takes a while in the world of sports speed is the ultimate weapon can you harness it athletes in need of speed and agility training Legends of Athletics has the perfect program for you. If you struggle accelerating, are unsure how to train for results in and out of season, cannot change directions or jump, hit the message button and set up a call and assessment today. With our system, we offer weekly check-ins, scheduled face-to-face calls, mental training, speed-based programming, year-round, in and out of season. I'm Justin Miller, owner of Legends of Athletics. Over the last 10 years in the sports performance industry, I have trained over 250 athletes. 30% of the Legends of Athletics athletes have obtained scholarships at the collegiate level for sport. In the world of sports, speed is the ultimate weapon. Harness your speed with Legends of Athletics through online training, custom online training, or face-to-face -face training. Be legendary. The first results, if you're very slow, the first results are going to be mind-blowing. After that, you're fighting for a literally hundredths of a second, a tenths of a second. Because now we're maxing out the body and we're maximizing what the body can do. And so, you know, I hope this video helped. I hope it was a great one. I hope it was a very rich one with uh, full of education and details and, and all that stuff. Because that's what my aim is. It's not just to, you know, just to be a coach and, and wow you guys with my words and just say all kind of stuff like that. But I really want you guys to, and, and when I say guys, I'm talking about guys and girls. I really want all y'all to... Um, take what I'm saying and implement it into your game. Implement implement it into your training. Uh, the the biggest thing that you can do is, especially these days, is polish your skills every season, in season, out of season. You just got to take time to polish your skills because that's the great separator. And like once you get into any season, you'll be able to see and tell. Once you start getting to the back half and things like that, who's put in the work, who hasn't put in the work, and what that off season training looked like and things like that. And so. Uh, just just stay the course, be patient, be resilient, be fast, be free, take the roads less travel, get 1% better each and every day, and as always, be legendary.